Hi everybody and thank you for watching this introductory video for National Geographic Learning's keynote series. During this video we're going to do a brief course overview followed by a more in-depth unit walkthrough so that you are really familiar with all of the content and details of the course. We'll then have a quick look at the teacher support including the lesson plan or teacher's book and the companion site as well. So let's make a start. What exactly is Keynote? Well, Keynote is an integrated skill series that teaches learners to develop the confidence and skills needed to express themselves powerfully and proficiently in English using TED Talks at the very heart of it. And we'll talk more about the TED Talks shortly and in another video as well. Who's it aimed at? Well, it's aimed at really those kind of older students or maybe sort of young adults, older adults who are working, who are at university, who may be sort of in between the two. Um, but they're probably studying English after work or fitting it around other commitments. Like I said, it's ideal for university students because of the presentation skills strand, which is equally suitable for many different academic situations. So in that respect, the course is quite flexible. Um, you know, it's been used in many private language schools around the world, um, but mainly with 16 and up in terms of age range. In terms of the sort of course content and length of the course, uh, the general recommendation is that it would cover 90 to 120 hours of course content. But let's take a deeper look at what exactly Keynote is all about. So like I say, it is an adult English language course that covers six levels from elementary to sort of high A1 to proficient uh, C2 level. It is one of the only adult title we have at a proficient level. Um, it covers both, well, it's available in both American and British English. So you have that option as need be. It uses fascinating real world content from TED to help learners develop an understanding of global ideas as a second key point to make. Third key point to make is that really it's all about authentic language, right? Um, authentic language from TED Talks and real interview builds that learner's confidence in using and understanding English in the workplace, in the academic settings which they find themselves. And then the fourth point to make is that it develops communication, critical thinking, creativity and collabor collaboration skills. So all of those 21st century skills are at the forefront of the course. In fact, all of the lessons apart from the TED lesson have a 21st century outcome. This is a recurrent sub syllabus throughout the whole course. All of the lessons like say, except the TED talk, end with this final productive task that practices a 21st century outcome. These tasks practice the language they just learned, but really the goal is to relate that skill to, a, to the modern workplace. So things like, of course, the four C's, communication, critical thinking, creativity, and collaboration are there, but also career and life skills, financial, business, information, literacy, global awareness, and leadership are all 21st outcomes that get covered throughout the course. There's a really key subskill on top of, of course, the grammar and vocabulary, reading, writing, listening, and speaking syllabuses as well. Okay, so each unit starts with an idea through, which is linked thematically through related examples of real world content. And they're introduced to the main idea through a TED talk. Learners see a segment, of, a segment of this TED talk at the beginning of the unit and then later in the TED talk pages. There are specially recorded interviews with interesting people from around the world that can lend another perspective to the main idea. Infographics expand on the main idea and readings add a further layer to it as well. So really that idea is being developed throughout the whole unit of work. 
in terms of themes that are being covered in the course, it covers all sorts. So we can see a creative city, technology, achievements, talents, confidence, healthy habits, career paths, wild places. Across the six levels, you get a whole range of different topics which covered, which expands students' perspectives on the world in which they are living, expands their horizons, and also their understanding of these concepts as well. And like I said, this is really driven through all of that TED Talk content. And a question we, we often get asked as, as sales at National Geographic Learning and as distributors and sales reps is why use TED? We're going to answer this question in more detail in, a, in another video, but very briefly, there are many, many reasons why TED is great for the classroom. It has authentic native speaker content, but also non-native speaker content as well, I should add. You know, we're living in a global world, therefore they need to be exposed to a range of accents, talking at a range of speeds and paces. We're trying to help them here to avoid the real world problem where they have the classroom environment where they have content that's created specifically for the classroom, but then they leave the classroom and they find it difficult to understand. So the authentic native content really helps to build those listening skills. Of course, you know, the TED speakers are inspiring. They have great ideas that they want to share and they can engage learners. They know how to engage a massive audience. They can engage a classroom of students too. It has challenging listening content. Yes, it's authentic, but it's also challenging because we want to push our learners so that they are comfortable when they enter the real world situation. And that high level content is ideal for those high level students, the upper intermediate, advanced, and also proficient students. But that said, of course, they can also be adapted for the lower level. So even for the elementary, pre-intermediate, the intermediate levels, the TED Talks have been chosen specifically for those levels. The talks themselves have not been edited for language level. The length of the talks have been edited, and this will vary depending on the level. And of course, the higher the level, the longer the TED talk, the more comprehension activities there are. But really it's more about editing the talk and gauging or uh, applying suitable task types to the levels and sort of the number of questions that might get asked. So you grade the task, not the talk. Essentially is what the process the keynote takes. Another really re good reason why we should use TED Talks is they are a great model for presentation skills. We can see these guys are, well, guys and girls, are, they are professionals at present, pre presenting their ideas, right? So therefore they are a great model for our students to watch and learn from. And we'll look more at the presentation syllabus shortly. And of course, there's a wide ranging array of topics that get covered in any TED Talks. You know, certainly if you went to TED.com, you'd find every topic under the sun is covered. And with Keynote, you know, the best of those have been handpicked for the course. But they've been picked so that they are relevant, meaningful and engaging for our learners. Because they are contemporary, they are cutting edge. They are very of the now. They don't date, so they don't date, therefore they're always relevant and meaningful to our learners. And finally, you know, you talk to many teachers who've used TED before and they love using TED Talks. Um, you know, all around the world, teachers are using them. So we are providing a service here in, in giving them ready-made lessons essentially for TED. Okay, so that's a look at some of the key features. Let's now have a look at a unit. Um, and we look at a unit from the upper intermediate level, the upper intermediate B2 level. Um, and we see straight away from the, the contents that it really is an integrated skills and systems program. Uh, there are 12 units for every level, it's first thing to note. Um, and each level has, or each unit has a TED talk, it has grammar, it has vocabulary. And the vocabulary kind of pops up in various lessons. It's in the TED lesson, there's a bit within the reading lesson, and also within the speaking and writing lessons. You've got pronunciation, there's reading, there's listening, there's speaking, there's writing. All those core skills are there 
on top of the 21st century skills as well. So in terms of how the unit is structured, the first lesson is the TED lesson, and this takes up two spreads, okay? And we'll see why this is in a moment. We then have the grammar lesson, which is followed by the reading lesson. And then every unit finishes with the speaking functional lesson and the writing lesson. I should also add that at the end of every second unit, there is a review lesson as well, which is a further spread. And we'll see an example of that shortly. So the first page or the first two pages of the TED Talk lesson is essentially the pre-work, the preparing the learners for the TED Talk, because we have to make it as accessible as possible for them, especially at those lower levels. You know, after all, they're going to be watching an authentic English speaker or an authentic uh, video with a native or near native English speaker talking. Therefore, they need to be prepared for it. And we do that in a number of ways within Keynote. First of all, we have that background information. We introduce the learners to the speaker and to the topic, the theme, and the big idea of that speaker. And we ask some comprehension questions just to activate that schemata. That then is followed by some pre-teaching of key vocabulary. This is something that we would do in any kind of listening task, um, but it's especially important within the TED Talk lessons to pre-teach that key vocabulary so that the students are familiar and aware of it when they come to listen. And then the third way in which we prepare students for the TED Talk is through the authentic listening skills section. And this is essentially introducing students to all those things which learners find difficult about listening to English, using extracts taken from the following TED Talk. So in this case, we can see that it's all about intonation and the rising inflection and trying to sort of understand and hear that. But other things that, that get covered are other phonological aspects like focusing on stress patterns, linking sounds, assimilation, elision, and intonation as well. But also semantic aspects get covered. Discourse markers, grammatical clues, use of fillers, all those little things which can make listening to authentic English hard are covered, just to give them that confidence to listen to the TED Talk. So once they've done all that, they are then ready for the TED Talk. And like I mentioned just now, it's all about how we grade, how we organize the tasks. Some of the talk, TED Talks are quite long. Certainly at the advanced and the proficient levels, they are over 10 minutes, a lot of them. At the lower levels, of course, they are much shorter and much more visual. Um, so to that end, the tasks are graded and the talk is split up into different sections. Okay? Generally speaking, there's always a gist listen task initially, but then the talk is split into different parts. So we can see here, you have activities for part one, part two, part three. And this ensures that there are smaller chunks of listening and also different types of question can be asked. It might be gap fills, it might be a summarizing task, it might be multiple choice, it will just depend. And um, you see here, there are a variety of different question types. And that is true of all of the levels. But what it means is that you're not having to listen to the same, the full TED talk multiple times. It was listening to different chunks of it, maybe two or even three times, depending on the learners. But it supports them in that respect because it is much more scaffolded, scaffolded for them. So once they've done the TED talk and they've done the comprehension questions, they then have the vocabulary in context section. So this is a really nice section where we get students to rewatch certain clips of the TED talk. And I'm gonna show you an example of that right now. I'm gonna share a different screen with you. Stay with me a moment. Stop sharing that. I'm gonna share the, my screen here. Stay with me a second. You should be able to see that. I'm gonna click here on vocabulary in context for the unit we've been looking at. So here we go. And make sure I've got the sound and the video optimized as well. Okay. 
things like breast cancer and colon cancer are directly tied to our lack of physical inactivity. kind of odd to do. I asked people to go on a walking meeting to the Okay, hopefully you get the idea of how that works. It's a really nice little feature of the course. Let's come back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so that all gets covered in the vocabulary and context where they watch the video, they guess the meaning of those words. And it's a really important skill because it's something that we do all the time with readings, but we don't necessarily do it with listening activities. The vocabulary and context session is then followed by the critical thinking activities, which is a really core part of the course. Um, specifically linked to these, uh, to the TED lessons. And they essentially take on the form of comment boxes. So the course uses these comment boxes throughout the all levels, and we ask questions related to them. Um, you know, viewers' comments are something which you see all the time in newspaper websites, TED websites, YouTube. People like to comment on things because they're thinking critically about them. So Keynote takes advantage of that fact and uses that as a platform for further discussion. And it explores lots of different areas of critical thinking. So we can see here, this lesson is all about reflecting on experiences. But other parts of the critical thinking syllabus include identifying problems and solutions, challenging assumptions, uh, reading between the lines, extending an argument, supporting evidence, recognizing tone, identifying the takeaway message, the key information, so the range of different critical thinking skills are developed there. And then that leads on to the presentation skills syllabus. And this is a really key part of the whole course, giving students that ability, that confidence to give effective and memorable presentations using the TED speakers as models. So in each TED talk, they rewatch certain parts of it so that they become familiar with that skill. So here, it's all about beginning with a strong statement. They rewatch the TED talk or part of the TED talk and they say, well, did the speaker do this well or did they not do it well? What did they do to make a strong start in this case? And then we give students a little kind of role play scenario in which they get to practice that particular skill. Doing like a mini presentation, not a full one, but just like a mini presentation. In terms of the other skills or the other presentation skills that get covered in the course, um, is a whole range. So repeating key ideas, taking the audience on a journey, speaking clearly, using humor, organizing the talk well, being persuasive, using gesture, being authentic, et cetera. There's a huge amount of things get covered. Um, and certainly, you know, we're not expecting learners to be TED level speakers by the end of the course, but from unit one through to unit 12, we would expect to see an improvement across different areas of their present skills. Okay, so there's a lot within that TED lesson, um, which then leads into lesson two, which is the grammar lesson. So Keynote is quite unique in that it presents all of its grammar in context through infographics, um, which is really engaging for the learner, it's something different, you know, it's practicing those visual literacy skills as well. And then language exponents are then pulled out and showcased in the grammar box and then followed up with concept checking questions. So it takes an inductive approach to grammar learning, whereby the students are working rules out for themselves. Remember, these are young adults, adults. They have those reasoning skills that work out rules for themselves. Students then move back to the book to read about the grammar in more detail. They can check their understanding using the grammar box or indeed using the grammar summary at the back of the book. So here we can see the lesson was all about modals and related verbs in the past form. 
Um, they have the bit of listening to go with the infographic, they answer some questions, and then they read the models, they refer to the back of the book for the grammar summary and additional control practice if you want them to do that additional practice. But really within the main course, but there's plenty of control practice anyway. You can see here on the right-hand page, there's at least three control practice activities before going to the spoken task, that final spoken task with that final 21st century outcome that we saw. And of course, this activity recycles, practices the grammar point from the lesson. If you do want the further control practice, there is additional photocopyable worksheets in the back of the teacher's book, which give further practice in the grammar. Lesson three is the reading lesson. And the readings are based on contemporary and real world text. Okay, they've been taken from authentic sources. Yes, at different levels, they will have been graded for language. And the different activities cover reading comprehension, developing specific reading skills like skimming, scanning, reading between the lines. But it also reacts or depends on getting a personal reaction to the context of the text and the text itself because that's what we do in real life. We read a text, we have a reaction to it. So we want to sort of embellish that a little bit as well. There's also vocabulary work included in the reading lessons too. So that might be inferring from context in the main case. Let's have a quick look at that in more detail. So we can see here a range of different comprehension questions. Exercise six is the vocabulary section as well. And we give them some practice with that vocabulary too. So in this case, we'll look at work with uh, financial vocabulary. Work in pairs, discuss the questions using that vocabulary. And then that leads on to the final speaking task again with that 21st century outcome. So here's a really good example, working in groups, you're gonna organize a sponsored event to do as a class, decide the following. So it's a really good group collaborative activity but also there's critical thinking involved, creative thinking involved. So all of those 21st century skills are coming through this kind of mini project, let's say in this case. That then leads us on to lesson four, uh, the first half of which is kind of listening and speaking, uh, kind of focuses specifically on functional and situational language that is relevant to working adults. This really where that kind of that professional approach or that professional focus comes through is in these two lessons. And we can see here, it's all about young entrepreneurs. In this case, there's a language focus, which we expect students to use within the final task. It's modeled through some speaking activities and then, sorry, through some listening activities, and then it moves on to the speaking task itself. We then have the writing lesson and the writing lessons are generally speaking, focusing on professional type writing skills. So here is an email, so there's lots of work on emails, reports, and so forth. Um, there are on-page models for students to follow. So it's very much a genre product writing approach that Keynote takes. That said, there is further writing practice in the workbook. Um, where there are actually six double page spreads that provide detailed practice of the kind of writing that come up in the Cambridge exams. So articles, stories, different kinds of emails. So if you want that more exam focused writing task, look in the workbook. But in the main student's book, it is really all about that kind of professional type of writing. Um, but essentially what they're doing, they're helping students to generate ideas, provide them with a model, giving them useful language. And then allow them to plan, draft, revise, and analyze the work that they have done. So that's the end of the main unit. But like I said, every second unit, there is a review lesson as well. And this covers pretty much all the skills and systems. So we can see here there's listening, there's grammar, there's vocabulary, there's discussion work, speaking, and writing as well. So a really good thorough review. And there are additional reviews within the workbook as well. So that's what's available for the students. How about the teacher? Well, the Keynote teacher's book is 
it's really good in terms of the content that it has. It's really supportive. There are step-by-step -step teacher's notes. You have at a glance goals of the lessons of the unit. You have all of the answers as well as suggested answers. Now, this is important because a lot of the questions in Keynote are quite open-ended and sometimes teachers may struggle to have their own ideas and views on this. So the suggested answers helps them with this. There's also all of the audio and all of the video scripts within the teacher's book. And there are extra activities. So throughout each unit, there will be suggestions for these extra activities to extend student practice of the language, to extend their learning. And there's also the opportunity for teachers to extend their own learning as well with the teaching tips syllabus. So Keynote has a really strong professional development syllabus for the teachers. Every unit has two or three teaching tips looking at different areas of uh, teaching. So here we can see this one is all about concept checking questions and using those. But it might be using timelines. It might be to do with classroom management. It might be how to teach specific grammar, how to teach vocabulary. It just depends. There is further support for the teacher uh, for in-class activities with photocopyable worksheets for each unit. So there are two of these for every unit. And generally speaking, they will link to, I mean, it does vary, but it'll link to lessons two and three in the main, but it does vary. Also available in the back of the teacher's book are the unit tests. Um, these are really thorough in-depth tests um, and you can see straight away that they mirror a lot of the task types that you might find in the Cambridge exams. So this is taken from the intermediate so we can see a vocabulary close, we can see the multiple choice close and we can see a sentence transformation as well. It should also be noted that the tests are available on the companion site in Word format. This means that they are editable and teachers can take out, add things as they wish. And it's really important to note, okay? So on the website, on the companion site, you can have an editable version of the unit tests. Now, talking of the companion site, this is a really great resource for the teachers. Loads for them to see here. So if you click on the resources button, we can see here a list of all of the different additional content that's available to teachers. Um, there's some additional grammar work, there's the video scripts, the audio, the video itself, um, word list as well. It is password protected and teachers will need to register with their own email, but the generic password, which can be found in the front of the teacher's book, is keynote tchr hashtag. It is all case sensitive to be aware of that but that can be found in the front of the teacher's book they go to the website and they just log in using their email and that password however you know that what there is really really great but for me the best thing about the microsite the the companion site are the ted talk workplace worksheets so these are a total of 34 additional standalone lessons, okay, um, which are linked to the workplace. So there are two different sections. We have the section for industry worksheets, which cover, as you can see, agricultural, construction, education, health, etc. And then we also have the business department worksheets as well. So customer service, finance, human resources, logistics, management, marketing and sales, research and development, sustainability. And you go into each one, you pick your topic and you'll generally get two or three different choices of lessons here. So we click on the industry ones and we see here a choice of three TED Talks connected to this topic, this theme. And all of the resources are there. You have the recording of the TED Talk and all of the worksheets and the teacher's worksheets as well. These are an amazing resource. And just to give you an example of what they look like in action. So this is the first page here, Why Good Leaders Make You Feel Safe by Simon Sinek for the C or proficient level. We get discussion activities. We get a little bit of reading using vocabulary. We get 
more discussion. We get to talk about the big ideas of that TED talk. You get more information, comprehension questions for the TED talk. And then we have a final speaking task as well. And this is generally some kind of role play activity. So they are actively applying the ideas of the TED talk in a communicative, collaborative, often creative and critical thinking aspect as well. Um, really, really great additional resource. They don't link to any particular unit in the books or any particular level, um, but they are there for additional resource for teachers. Okay, so let's just sum up really quickly what we've seen so far. So for the students, we have the student's book. We have My Keynote Online, so the online workbook, which also, for, for which there is also the print workbook and there are combo splits available too. For the teacher, you've got the teacher's book um, and the classroom presentation tool. You have all of the audio and all of the video as well. And there is also the exam view software, which can be downloaded for required from National Geographic Learning. Not on that list is the companion site, which we saw just now as well. So there's lots of support, lots of help for the teachers as well. Okay, that brings us to the end of this introduction to Keynote. We hope you found it useful. Um, have fun answering the questions that go along with it. Thank you.